Thank you, and thanks for the invitation. Um, we're in the middle of a, an extremely a fascinating process of setting the goals for the post-2015 uh, period. It's messy at times. Uh, uh, we don't quite know the outcome, uh, but probably, or not only probably, very likely, we'll have a development agenda that's broader, that's more integrated, so it looks beyond poverty at uh, a series of other issues. That's more integrated, at least will go some way in bringing the sustainability and the, and the poverty agenda together. And that is, in principle, universal, though we're struggling with the, uh, the implications of that. And then uh, we're starting to talk about money and, uh, and financing. Uh, in terms of financing, uh, if I were to sort of, my headline message would be one, me, question number one is how can developing countries attract more of the commercial funding? I use commercial rather than private because uh, if you look at the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund and uh, part of the Chinese commercial investment, they are private only in a, only at the receiving and not necessarily at the, at the giving, at the giving and uh, sort of at the investing end. So sort of, but how can developing countries capture a larger share of that? That's uh, to promote sustainable, uh, inclusive economic growth in their countries, because without that, the rest is not going to happen. So, so, so that is question number one. And it's, it's important to have questions in the right order. That's question number one. Uh, question number two is how can countries in developing countries tax the income that's generated through that economic growth uh, in, a, in a better way than at present? Increase from the, the sort of uh, lower tens to the mid to, to the mid twenties in terms of uh, of tax to uh, gdp to gdp ratio i think that's the that's the other big question that's the other big question and then the third question to me is what then about international public finance and what's the what's the role that international public finance can play in this in this totality and linked to that then i think is sort of we should perhaps the headline should be from sort of focus on ODA to managing diversity. If you look at the world from the perspective of uh, development and finance ministers in developing countries, it's much more about managing diversity and sort of seeing what, how can we maneuver in this increasingly complex landscape where number of providers and type of providers is uh, is increasing and diversifying, and we need to see what's the what's uh, how how can we how can we better uh, benefit from from all of that. So that's that's one that's that's message number one in a way. The second one, because if we then focus more narrowly on the international public financing, which is uh, then we're in the business of measurement, so I'll say a few words about uh, about that. Sort of how do, how do we measure it? And and we have the situation where we have an o perhaps an oversupply of data uh, on ODA. We know a lot about it. Uh, how much, uh, from where to where, for what purposes, and we know surprisingly little about the other. Uh, the other parts of uh, of public finance, we publish uh, some of it, but uh, the the overall level of detail and knowledge about that is is much more limited. Uh, then there's the second question of do we have the right measures? And if we say measures, of course, are uh, also incentives. One one can discuss the 0 0.7 target a lot, but there's no doubt that it's been a powerful in incentive. Uh, I don't think what has happened in, U in this country over the past few years would have happened without the 0 0.7 target. So, so it's a very powerful political instrument. ODA mm, has a long history. Uh, it's not a bad measure, actually. It, uh, but uh, it has got a couple of major uh, weaknesses, uh, which we are trying to address. One is, uh, what does it take for a loan to uh, count as aid, and how do you incorporate the measurement of loan in, in, a, in the measurement of something that's primarily grant? Uh, and we have a complex discussion, and we can come back to that, about exactly how do you do that, and what are the challenges in, uh, in, in modernizing that. Then there is the second one, 
which is about instruments uh, aiming at private sector, where we have the the striking um, complex situation that if you if you make an equity investment and it fails, you're successful in terms of getting ODA. If you make an equity investment and it's successful, you get uh, get negative ODA from it. Uh, as incentive, <laughs> probably not too smart, I think. Uh, so so uh, again, we need to look at, and also sort of how do we capture the, the diversity of new instruments, uh, guarantees and others, that, and how do we capture them in, in the present? So that's one. The other one is, uh, so, mm, some small fixes, uh, not big changes, but some small fixes to the other concept. That's uh, measurement agenda number one. Measurement agenda number two is, could we develop a broader measure of public uh, development, fin uh, public financing, uh, international financing, that includes both the, the parts that uh, qualifies as ODA and other parts. We have a measure called, which nobody knows about in our statistical system, called OOF, Other Official Flows. It's, uh, <laughs> if you look at the statistics, it's quite sizable, actually. Um, um, it consists largely of non-concessional loans, but also some, ad some other element. So can we find, uh, we've been working and we have a, a sketch of a proposal for what we, the working title is Total Official Support for Development. Uh, capturing that both non-concessional lending, uh, some other supports to global public uh, goods, and then there's the big question about how big a share of security expend peace and security expenditure should you could you justifiably put into that, and that's a that's a highly controversial issue. Then there is the the third big uh, question, which what's then the best use of this? Uh, and, and particularly, what's the best use of public concessional financing? What, where do you use? What sort of? What's the optimal allocation of uh, of uh, public uh, concessional financing? Uh, how much of it should focus should go to countries that have limited access to other sources of funding? So, t to what extent do you think? Uh, do we think in a in a compensation manner, in a way, about the allocation of uh, of, of concessional funding? Should it primarily focus on countries that that struggle most to get access to to other to other sources of funding, uh, which, to our small surprise, largely coincides with the LDC group? You know, I was personally a bit surprised by by the the sort of degree to which the the old LDC group actually captured the the the, the countries that are that are most heavily dependent on aid. There, there are some, of course, there are, there are LDC countries who are not dependent on that. That's not so important. Then there are some countries uh, that uh, uh, doesn't, uh, is not captured. And then there is the, particularly some countries affected by, by conflict and fragility, though not all fragile states are necessarily highly aid dependent. And then there is the, the question of risk and resilience and how, what do we do with sort of richer countries that are exposed to heavy risk, particularly small island states, I think, where, where, which is uh, peculiar. But that's, that's, one big, that's one big discourse. Uh, the jury is still out. Uh, I think uh, some of us have been arguing that the, we have a UN target for the LDC. It's not actually not so bad. If we could reach that, we would, uh, wouldn't, uh, and we're, uh, we've been moving in the wrong directions over the past, uh, over the past couple of few years in terms of reaching it. So maybe a revitalization of that. We've been playing around with some other ideas, but that's one. The, the other one is, what then about uh, catholic use of aid? Uh, and to me, the most important catalytic use of aid is helping developing countries mobilize their own domestic resources. So aid to tax uh, is the most important catalytic use of aid. Uh, and we are doing far too little of that. It's probably one of the smartest things we could do would probably be to, we talked about doubling in Mexico, but maybe we should talk, be, be substantively more ambitious than that. And, but a, a substantive increase. Then, there's probably a fairly high return on investment in some areas of uh, using uh, aid resources to combat illicit flows out of developing countries. I think that's also probably an area where one could have fairly substantive return on investment. Uh, and then there is the, the, whole, the whole big package of 
how can aid be used to mobilize, catalyze private resources? <clears throat> and there's, there we are, I guess, in, in the phase where uh, there's a lot of agreement that that's a good idea, that's a good idea. There's a lot of individual experiments happening. Uh, we're trying, hoping over time to do two things. One is to, to start gathering experience about this, sort of what uh, bring together practitioners, see what works, what doesn't work, what are, what are pitfalls mm. in trying to do this, so that we, we can move from, from a stage of, uh, of the, the sort of hype of something new into a more sort of uh, a more evidence-based uh, type of approach to that. Secondly, um, uh, about we're looking into the possibility of measuring this. Sort of, if we want to incentivize it, we see sort of how can can we put in place a system which measures what uh, <coughs> our members are mobilizing through what private or commercial investment they are mobilizing through the use of uh, of uh, of public uh, of public finance. I think uh, let's stop there. That, that's thank you. That's a. A, a great menu and I think some nice phrases that will um, help us capture the essence of the question sort of from, from odour to diversity, um, which will, will help us with this sort of complementary nature of flows, um, these rather thorny questions of measurement, and I know there'll be some sessions later that will drill into those in a little bit more detail, and a question that we're much preoccupied with at ODI at the moment around the question of international public finance and the to compensate or to catalyse, mm. maybe we'll, uh, we'll mm. pick that up as we go through. Thank you very much, John, for setting us out um, strongly. Kapil, maybe I could hand over to you and give us a, a perspective from some of the wider flows and an, an African take.